Today's video is documenting a database. Today, during the documentation of a database, we will be taking a tour around a logical model as well as the physical model. We'll highlight key features within those areas, and then we will be covering the data dictionary features and highlighting the data lineage and macro features as well. So here we have our Northwinds database. We've already reverse engineered and documented this particular model. On the right, you'll have the diagram screen. As you can see, we've added a little color here just to kind of show you some of the features we have with the diagram and object display and various options that you can do. You can color coat your primary keys and foreign keys. You can also assign different colors for different types of data to help you recognize things within your diagram. It's really personal preference, but you do have those abilities. In addition, on the left here, you'll see our tree navigation. We have the logical model, and here we have a couple of physical models. We do support multiple physical models to a single logical model, and they do not have to be the same database platform as you can see here. We have Oracle as well as SQL. Um, we have some submodels here. Submodeling helps you break down a larger model into smaller pieces, which can be easier for you guys to work on and develop, as well as break out different types of data or processes and so forth. Really, um, however you need to see the data, you can apply it here in the submodeling. Submodels do carry through into your physical models if you wish. And again, the logical model is not tied to a single database platform. So I'm going to open up one of our tables here, or entities, and you'll see the list of employees, attributes here within the table. We also have the keys here listed, primary and foreign keys. You have relationships that you have created between the entities. We have non-identifying and identifying here within this logical model. We have the definition of this particular table or entity. You know, this contains all of the information, whether part-time or full-time, on the company's employees. So these are lots of different metadata that you can assign at the entity level, from naming standards to the security information tab here, data lineage, you can create data movement rules, and so forth. So within the entity itself, there's a lot of metadata and documentation that can be done to help with your overall modeling. We also have the ability to go in and edit the attribute itself. The data types that you'll see here are ANSI for the universal across all of the database platforms typically recognized because this isn't tied to a specific platform. We use ANSI in the logical models. Again, at the attribute level, you have various pieces of metadata that you can assign here from definitions, the where used, so you can see where it might be used across the various physical and logical models. Again, naming standards at the column level, security information, and column level lineage so you can have your source and target information documented as well. So I'm just going to press OK. Now the different types of relationships that we have are we have relationship types of identifying, non-identifying, and non-specific. And within those, you have optional and mandatory for that particular relationship. And then you have, of course, the cardinality to choose from. The zero to one, or zero to one or more, and so forth. So you have all of those choices within your relationships themselves. And you have additional information that you can apply to these relationships, role names, definitions, and so forth. A lot of these same features are available within the physical model as well. So if we come down to the main model in SQL, you'll see that this diagram looks a little different. We have some stored procedures here that were brought through. 
We also have views and tables included as well. So there again, you'll have your main model here. There were not any submodels created with this one, but of course you can see the Oracle model to the left had submodels. Again, if we zoom in just a bit, we can go into the employee table and go to the columns feature. And you'll see that this particular field here is a reports to foreign key. So if we double click into this, that is basically the employee ID, but it's the manager of this particular person as well. So you can reuse attributes in this way and create them for unique identities. We have indexes as well as your foreign keys. And again, you can create definitions for these tables. You have the where used at the table level and all of the same naming standards and security information and attachment bindings here that were available through the data dictionary. And so as we move into the data dictionary, you'll see there's various attachments created from descriptions of fields, team member lists. You can utilize these attachments however you see fit. Um, you can create data stewards, data owners, maybe business stakeholders that are tied to this particular set of data. We also have a base level you know, federally regulated privacy rules that are out there to start you off. You can easily add to these lists. You also have the ability to do reference values. So if you have state codes, for example, here or salary ranges, you have naming standards templates, which allow you to set your upper and lower case between the logical and physical model. You also have the ability to map logical to physical entity names if they have different naming requirements. And then the domains, of course, are just a list of your reusable, shareable attributes across your model. So these can be used across your data model easily as you're creating. Here we have our data lineage tab. This allows for the source target mappings and data movement operations, such as your ETL. It helps you to visualize your ETL process. You have the ability to use your current logical and physical models within the file, of course, that you're in. You also have the ability to import other data sources, such as databases themselves or other model files. Here you'll see we've attached another physical database. Um, for our invoice table, which is, this, which is the target table for this information. Again, you'll see here are the source tables. And then we have the transformation, of course, that you choose the fields that you want from the input and then also the output. You have the ability to choose the type of transformation that's occurring here. If it's a business rule or a calculation, Maybe it's a select into for this particular one. So here again, you'll see that the invoice table is the target. So that is a feature for data lineage and being able to document your ETL or movement rules. In addition, we have macros. Our macro library performs operations on the model, but you can easily extend these and customize these. It is made up of VB, and we use a WinRap utility. So for instance, if we open this up, you'll see the VB code here in the utility window. Then you also see the features that you can save and also run from here. But you can look and customize these. You can customize them here, or you can create new ones based on these. Whatever it is that you need, you can do that and then save them in your folder and they will then appear in your list of available macros. 
you can see here the extensive list that comes standard with the Data Architect tool. And this does allow for additional functionality of things. In today's video, we showed you around a logical and physical model. We highlighted features within the models for documentation. We discussed the data dictionary features and highlighted our data lineage and macro features. If you would like more information, you can go to idera.com slash contact sales.